How the heck are you, everybody? I am Fastidious. Welcome to my channel, and let's welcome to the screen Ma Bucket. This will be a reaction to his thank you and goodbye video regarding Watcher of Realms. But just to buckle up, guys, I do think this will be a fairly long video. As we can look here behind me, his video was 20 minutes and 34 seconds. I'm very much going to treat this as like an in-conversation with a lot of the points he brings up. There isn't so much to react to in terms of what is happening, and I don't really want this to be like a react video. To be honest, I kind of just want to talk to my friend. He's really busy. This is the way I can do it, and he's a shockingly brilliant dude. He is so articulate. He is so well-mannered and so well-structured in what he presents here, and he really touches on a million things that I'm thinking about all the time, but I don't have that British ma bucket flair to to engage with. So that is what I'm going to do here. It's going to kind of be an in conversation kind of video with ma bucket though virtually through uh, him in the past in a recording that he made. If this isn't your cup of tea, I totally get it. I do not envision this video getting very many views. That's not why I make a lot of videos and this is something that I can say a lot of the things I want to say because I've got an amazing structure here, an amazing person, amazing foil, someone to bounce things off of in virtual mob bucket over here, because boy, does he do an amazing job. Without further ado, let's go back to the beginning. I actually just finished watching the entire thing on 1X, which is an exceedingly rare thing for me. That's why I've been, I don't know, a single digit times ever in Watcher of Realms. Let's throw this on 1.25, not out of disrespect for mob bucket, but out of respect for you guys. He talks a lot about respecting time. Already, I think a lot of people have already tuned out of this video. It would be even longer because I'm going to respond to basically everything he says because I just have so much to say. He, he really does a brilliant job. Without further ado, we don't need an intro. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's been a while. I'm very sorry for the lack of updates or the lack of videos or just anything. I had planned to make a goodbye video and I just didn't because I couldn't decide what to say. So I decided I'll just do it now finally and uh, yeah, make a video. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to say. So I can already jump in here. So Mom Bucket and I, uh, I would definitely consider us friends. I think he would say the same. It was We had a very, uh, I think, close friendship for a very limited period of time because it came right at the end of his time in, in war, in Watcher of Realms. So I obviously, he was the first creator I ever saw in the space. For anyone who doesn't know, if you're new and you don't know Mom Bucket, I don't think there would be many of you. But he was the the most respected and most dominant figure in our community by a mile. And I mean that with no disrespect to anyone, you know, OG players, Forerunner guys, or any other brilliant big creator like Ivy Lee or something. Because me and Ivy hopped on the game at fairly, fairly reasonably the same time, right? Ivy was like right at Global Launch. I was like three or four weeks later. Ivy was already doing amazing things. And she was, he's going to talk about Ivy at the end. And everything he says about Ivy, I will add to, because Ivy is, she's the queen, man. She is the most generous, thoughtful person in helping other creators. However, Mob Bucket had been on the game at that point by Global Launch, I believe for either eight or nine months, because he started in either September or October of 2022 uh, with closed beta. So he was just such a, a booming, respectful, knowledgeable, amazing voice in the community that I've never seen when a game launches. You know, you might look at Raid Shadow Legends for a lot of people that have come from over there. Maybe that would be Hell Hades. Uh, but he grew into this. By the, when I started watching Hell Hades, he had like 600 subscribers, right? bit different now. But my point is the game had been out for a little while and he was growing into the scene and grew to the top. Mob Bucket on launch was like, boy, does this guy have a video about everything? And my God, does he know his stuff? And look at that accent and look how polite he is and amazing. Uh, so I delayed reaching out to Mob Bucket for a very long time because I was I didn't want him to say no to me. It would have hurt my feelings. So I waited and waited and he was immediately very receptive. This would have been at like the beginning of October of last year. He stopped playing in November or something like that. Basically, that's when he took his big step away. It was right when he moved to Japan. When we connected, we're, this is going to be a long video, I told you guys. When we connected, Mob Bucket uh, was just oh, I'm moving to Japan in two or three weeks is what it was. We barely were able to uh, fit in a collab, uh, which was great that we did. It was a really like checklist thing for me. And then it, he turned out to be an awesome guy. So we had about two or three weeks where we messaged each other every day because, and I'll get to this towards the end. Now I'm going to let him talk again and let the video run. But you, you get to this point where no one can really relate to your lived experience, not even other content creators. It's like they, I needed someone who was another content creator who was kind of like me, kind of a similar age, some late 20s, early 30s guy, you know, in whatever corner of the world, just obsessed with the game, putting out a lot of content, but also feeling the pressures of like, what did I get myself into? And that was Ma Bucket. And also having a lot of, you know, things, griefs and grievances and stuff I wanted to air out about the community. Uh, and boy, he was, it was really cathartic connecting with him. And I, I, I wish we could have been in touch longer. I wish I got, got in touch, re reached out sooner. Should not have let my own like fears and, and personal issues get in the way. But it was awesome. He's an amazing guy. We just were messaging right before this. Uh, he is, he's amazing. Let's listen. 
to all be quite rambly, but I've always wanted to respect people's time, so I, I quit playing Water of Realms. I quit making videos, and it was there was no big drama, nothing blew up or anything. I just didn't have the time. I moved to Japan in November in 2023. And since then I've been pretty crazy busy, but in a, in a good way. It's been really pleasant. It's been really fun. And yeah, making content for gachas is actually really time consuming. I guess content in general is very time consuming to make. And I just don't have that time anymore. So I, I decided that the you know the obvious option for me to, to gain time was to stop making videos. So um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me and all the time I've been making videos, especially. It's a great time. This is going to be short. Every time I pause them, I'm not going to talk for four minutes or whatever that was. But Mobucket did all this with an entirely full-time job. There was no respite. There was no sabbatical from the job. He was working full-time the whole time he did all of this. Me and Ivy and, and people that put out content every day struggle enough as it is treating this and actually it becoming a full-time job. This was his hobby that just – you can imagine how overwhelming it was uh, with the amount of quality content. It really was on another level when I started. No one else was doing what he was doing. Crazy consistency as well, combined with the fact that this guy is a full-time software engineer last year it was honestly a lot of fun i really enjoyed it the community was really fun to engage with as well and you guys have been always very kind to me in the comments so i really do appreciate that um but yeah i just i just didn't have time that's pretty much the whole reason behind it um i also truthfully i got a bit bored of playing the game not because there's anything inherently wrong with watch of realms it's just i just goku yeah you know i kind of went for a phase i think eventually people burn out of things i played the game for it's like seven months in beta and then restarted and did everything again and then did some new stuff while also making a lot of videos. And I've been kind of, I was hitting this point of burnout for quite a while, actually. I think it was... Yeah, so he's talking about getting bored with the game. I have not felt that yet. I still find the game really great and I'm still I'm not, I'm not trying to be some show for the company. I think Mabu would agree because I know he's played other games. I'm blown away, by, blown away by the frequency with which they put out content. And it's, it's for me, unseen in other gacha games I've, I've played. However, the gameplay loop is extremely repetitive. If I only played my my account, I think I'd feel exactly how he does. I, I, I really do. And I think, again, this is, uh, he was doing all of this with a full-time job, so he wasn't able to do, basically, like my other job is like takeovers and, and working on the website and stuff like this. For him, this was like his hobby. He's a brilliant enough coder, and we'll get into that later, that he built the whole website by himself. There was no time left to do takeovers and keep the game fresh. That really keeps the game fresh for me, the, the constant new problem solving and checking out new accounts. But if I had been on my own account this whole eight months or whatever, uh, which is probably where he already was reflecting upon global launch, yeah, I, I could totally see how it could get bored. And I'll be honest, like uh, if any of the raid guys are watching, I think all the time, how could Hell Hades not be bored? How could how could uh, J Gigs not be bored? I mean, these guys do start new accounts all the time, and I think that's part of the reason because they get they get bored. It gets extremely repetitive and monotonous, and the gameplay loop is kind of just like the same thing every day launch month i made myself release like one or two videos every single day and at the end of that month even though you know youtube was going great i was just like what am i doing this is crazy it's just so much time and i was considering quitting then uh, but I, I hang on because it was fun and it was nice to see the community grow and it was nice to chat to guys and see the game grow and see more people get interested and enjoy the game but yeah i had a few moments where i was considering stopping and uh, eventually I, yeah it just worked out that that was what i ended up doing because mainly because of time also burnout and just wanting to take a break from stuff so that's that that's why i quit playing watch realms that's why i quit making videos the rest of this video, I'm just going to talk about random stuff. I don't really have a format or a plan. I have some things I want to talk about, though, so we'll do that. I'll quickly say what he's saying there. This is something he expressed to me one-on-one -on -one when, when we had a call. Because uh, he was like, wow, you make so many videos. Like, aren't you tired? And at that point, I absolutely was not. Because uh, I was fr I was fresh and I was just loving it. I'm still loving it, but it's become a very different thing for me. Like, this very much is my job now. Uh, but at that time, then when we connected, I'd probably had been putting out two videos a day, having only missed one or two times where I did one video, and never missing a day. Uh, twice and he was like you put out the most content what the heck and I really hear it now here in the way he's at the time looking back you know I had a sense of what it was like but now that I'm deeper in it and he, what he's saying here it's like to, to even try to do that which he did for a month and with a full-time job is unthinkable so uh boy oh boy sorry that the background's super boring it's just gonna be me talking a load of crap so uh yeah hopefully it's somewhat interesting so the things I want to talk about are mainly the website and what's gonna happen to it um, what's going to happen to the channel if I'm going to what I'm going to do with it if anything and um, content creation generally it'd be cool to share some of my insights from my brief time as a content creator that might I don't know be interesting to you guys or maybe if it's like you're considering doing in the future maybe it'll be useful but so that's kind of this is I guess at this point I'm almost 10 minutes into the video this is going to be like an hour-long video I think so again you feel free to click off if you'd like. A lot of the more interesting stuff will come as he brings it up. We've kind of introed now. Right now, I think he's about to go into a big thank you to Moonton, if I'm remembering the structure of the video right. Maybe there's one more intro piece to say. I think I will skip over that. I'm going to obviously have Mobucket's link to his video 
go watch it. Watch it a million times. I mean, this might be his last video for a while. Give him those. I mean, it's already going to get so many views. It's so amazing. But why not? What an amazing way to support him. I'll probably go back to it all the time and watch it. It's such a nice video. But I will skip ahead to the Moon Time part. You can guys can go watch that. I'm really interested in like his opinions of Watcher of Realms and his opinions of the community and his opinions of what it's like to be a content creator. He made some amazing points, and that's kind of where we're going to key in. But before we jump into those topics, first, I'd like to say thank you to Moonton. I think that's the Moonton. Thank you. Give me one second to find where we pick up. All right, we can pick up right here with kind of his concluding thoughts about Moonton, and then we'll go right into uh, the meat of the video. So, yeah, I want to clear that up first. Um, genuinely, a load of respect for the developers, the team, and everyone involved at Moonton for working on Watcher Realms. I think they're doing a great job, and I hope they continue to, and I hope they enjoy their time working on the game. I just wanted to get that out of the way at the start because I think it's important to, to give them their. Yeah, so definitely go watch to hear what he said, but he really is giving Moonton their flowers for like making the effort and talking about how he's actually become friends with some of those guys and how organically his little trip, his little brief internship in Shanghai at the at the Moonton headquarters came to be. And I really do get the sense that there's at least a, a huge core to this team, people working on the game, that do care about the game and they're putting doing amazing work. I think that's why we have a game that we, a lot of us really, really love. Uh, however, we'll talk later about Kaching Kaching Casino and Gotcha, and that's something I'm going to want to talk about a bit later on. How this is what we're doing, guys. This is the game we're playing. So no matter how much a game dev wants it to be an amazing game, there's always going to be that kind of nefarious element that we either have to accept or not. In Ma Bucket's case, eventually he didn't. In my case, it's something I'm still working through. So let's listen. The Jews, and uh, just to give my respect to people I've been in touch with for a long time. I hope we stay in contact. And yeah, so next, let's talk a bit about content creation. I'm Actually, I'm recording this at the end just to let you know because I wanted to, to put this at the start. There's a load of stuff I haven't said in this video that I wanted to say, but it's going to be too long, so apologies. Um, but yeah, this is this is the best I can do. Anyway, let's talk about content creation. The reason I started content creation is <clears throat> pretty much like most other content creators. I was like, hey, you can do this thing where you make videos and you, know, you can make some cash, and that's kind of cool. But also, I felt like I could offer something useful. To this is something I really got a kick out of watching. Uh, so he really outlines his whole thought process going into content creation. And for me, it was so much more of like a whim. And it, it, it really checks out. He's really a thoughtful guy. You know, he plans well. He thinks things through. And uh, it really impressed me how he'd really addressed a lot of these. And he comes out throughout the video, but how he really thought ahead to all these things. And there were such plans and so well executed. It's very neat to people because I noticed there was basically at the time I started making videos for Watcher of Realms no one else was making videos I think there were a couple of Russian guys and maybe I think there was another English guy who'd just done a couple but he hasn't he hadn't done a great deal and so I thought you know you know maybe it'll be something interesting where you can earn some pocket money I wanted some passive income I thought it could be a fun way to do that it would be an interesting experience I like to try new things so that was one of the motivations and the last one is for quite a bit of shade so apologies um, the dominant game in the industry is Raid Shadow Legends as everyone knows and I thought the quality of a lot of the videos I saw for that game the content creation i thought the bar wasn't especially high so i thought you know what i can give it a go it's not like this it's not like you're competing with some crazy production level stuff as you would with most other genres of youtube you're going up against some guys who've got teams behind them everything's pristine well made well edited you know everything is fully knocked out I so this is this is really interesting for me to hear to hear like hey i would like to do content creation where is there a nice barrier of entry obviously that wasn't his sole motivating thing uh maybe a lot of this is upon reflection but but it is interesting to think about and i think part of this video maybe will even fit its way into the title is going to be some of the advice mob bucket gives to other content creators or aspiring content creators i think i might input a lot of my own advice as well and uh, one thing i would touch on is it doesn't take that much for people to be like wow this video is is not, I don't want to say better, but it is more well-made than another video. A lot of people click record, record, cough, keep recording, this, that, and the other, and then the video ends. And maybe in it they beat 119 or something, or you know, in Raid they beat Dragon. But that's, I think, what he's voicing in a big way. You don't need to be like Ash with special effects. You don't need to bring be like me lately where I brought on like a part-time editor to stand out. I believe, I hope, my videos from the beginning have stood out because like, I edit a lot. I take out a lot of ums, and I never you'll never see me cough in a video. I, tr I stutter sometimes, so I try not. If I do stutter when, when I'm filming, I try to remove that, right? Ma Bucket, and I challenge anyone who's a real who's a real bucket head, go to Ma Bucket's videos. Look how many little cuts there are. This guy, I think this is part of the reason he burned out. Uh, he could have lasted a little longer. He cuts out every um. Every um. I cut out a lot of ums, but I have a, I want, we, we actually shared back and forth if you want some behind the scenes. Maybe I could dig this picture up if I remember to edit it in. We shared what our edited windows look like with how many cuts we had. His literally looks like a war crime. Blood all over the floor of his editing room. It is insane. Just chop, 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 chop every four seconds. So the, the, like, you don't have to go that high, but just showing care and, 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 uh, 
intention in your videos goes such a long way, I think. It's it's a subconscious thing. for Maybe some viewers actively notice. You guys can let us know in the comments. But I do think it's a subconscious thing. You watch one video, you go, ooh, that one felt better than this one. Not even about content. So that'd be a huge tip for content creators. If you're going to do it, he actually goes into, I think he says this verbatim, don't half-ass it. I really think so. Unless you just want to make videos and make videos. But if you want to have any chance of being mob bucket, you need to bring care to your craft. I think it's naturally just because of how quick people have to make videos. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's simple. I just think generally um, people have to make videos very quickly because it's like every day you're getting big channels releasing one or two videos, sometimes more. So they can't afford to have crazy high production values on every single video, which means the barrier to entry is not as high as it is in other genres on YouTube. At least that's what my perspective was. So I thought, you know what, I can actually do this. I can give it a go. And lastly, I had a friend a long time ago, Vulcan, who was just starting out on YouTube. And then when I saw he actually succeeded many years later, I realized, hey, you can actually do this. It does actually work. It's not just some crazy thing. So yeah, that was the reason I gave it a go at the start. I think if you do want to give it a go, my advice would be don't half ass it. I think that's generally good advice of anything. If you want something to succeed, you can't go 50%. You've got to really go for it. So I, I bought a reasonable camera. This blew my mind. This is almost to a T how long it hit me, took me to get to 1000. I think for me, it was 11 months uh, when I did Raid Shadow Legends. Um, I wasn't as good as Mobucket for sure. Not even just saying because of the game or this, that. Just literally watching his early videos, watching my early videos. But I worked my ass off. And even from then, I think I brought a lot of attention to what I do. But this is kind of kind of what it is. So this is going to be taking a step away from the bucket over here, the, the, the mob father himself, to give advice to aspiring creators. Can you be like like Destined or Mike and get 1,000 subscribers in a month? Sure. Especially if you're on a hot new game. It's going to help. However, in general, for the vast majority of you, it has to be a longer game for that if your intention is to be like Ma Bucket. That was never my intention. I lucked into this in a big way. So what is that luck? Well, luck is uh, – or what is success, right? What is the expression? It's like it's a mix of preparation and luck or, you know, circumstance and, and being well prepared. And that's kind of what you see. Ma Bucket, as he articulates, was like the first guy to make good videos. He's really the first – He's the first guy to make good videos, for sure. Other people had made videos, as he talked about, but there weren't many. And he's like, what if videos were good in this space? And what did that get him? Got him at 500 subscribers for the first th few months. That is what that is worth in the little in this little world, right? He could have literally Tarantino or Scorsese, any of these level, you know, it could be a full $200 million production by James Cameron. Maybe at that point it would get views. But my point is there, there's the viewership has a ceiling. He was probably hitting the ceiling. He, he I, I mean, Forerunner guys, if you're watching this, let me know in the comments. I'd be surprised if there were more than, uh, you know, five or 600 people that were actively into the game to the point of seeking out content or choosing to seek out, you know, audiovisual content. Um, so you wait and then an opportunity came, right? The game went global and at the beginning for sure was a smash hit and then didn't drop off. You know, obviously it has a big spike, it's a big spike when it smashes and then it came down and a lot of people being like, the game's dying, blah, blah. Everything I've looked at, the game is at worst plateauing. We, we are having people leave, we're having people come in, it's sustaining itself, right? But when that huge spike came, all of a sudden, Mob Bucket has videos with 70,000 views, 60,000 views, 50,000 views, and he'll get onto this later. But that amount of views turns into something pretty crazy financially uh, when you put out high volume content like this. Uh, so it, it really need to be patient, just to circle back to the point I'm trying to make. And again, before you like light me up in the comments, this is very much me using Ma Bucket to give him his flowers and then using him as a vessel and using this video as a medium for me to say a lot of the things I've wanted to say for a while. So do not roast me too hard for talking a lot more than he's going to talk. Like I said, this is going to be a long video. But uh, you got it's all about opportunity. I will say my videos now are way better than my raid videos. But my raid videos, if you like my videos, you probably you could go back. You probably would like them. But a lot of them got 400 views, 700 views, 600 views. You might be saying, well, at least you weren't getting 10 views. Like, of course I wasn't. I was working my ass off, right? It was a hobby, kind of like it was for Mobucket, but a very serious hobby for me. Uh, that and I took it seriously. I worked really hard on my thumbnails, even though a lot of you would think they're probably really ugly. Maybe you think my thumbnails now are ugly. My point is, even with that amount of intention and effort. Um, you need to, one, get your chops for it to eventually be good. Like, I hope my videos are becoming kind of good now. But on top of that, Mob Bucket's videos were still awesome back then. It just was like the opportunity wasn't really there. There wasn't some huge viewership, some huge player base. There were only so much clicks to be clicked. But then all of a sudden, global release, all these people make ads, people come try out the game, oh, wait, the game's good. Kaboom, right? I, I think we could explicitly, if I was to interview Ma Bucket, there's no doubt in my mind, he never dreamed that he would have all these videos with 30, 40, 50, 60K views, like basically instantaneously, two, three months after after the game went out. So he was shockingly well positioned, but because of his crazy effort and dedication, right? Um, and that's what this is, right? 10 months to reach 1K subs. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's exactly the same for me. Uh, 
So don't be discouraged by uh, any th any way feeling limited at the beginning. I bought a reasonable microphone and I made some Photoshop templates for thumbnails. If you're not willing to do that, the bare minimum, then it's, in my opinion, it's not really going to work. Your, the odds are against you. It's a very saturated market if you want to do this kind of thing. Um, so I have to interrupt again. Bare minimum at the least. If you want to succeed, you have to do a lot more than the bare minimum. You have to work uh, really hard. Not that that's what he was saying, but like I've had people send me videos. I, I couldn't remember them by name, so I can't even like roast something. But I, I, a lot of, uh, I, I don't know, at least a few times a week, there have been periods where it's every day because I have some touch of clout in this space. People will ask me for advice, aspiring content creators or this, that, and the other. The big, biggest thing I say is try your hardest at everything or the hardest you can at everything. Because I have people send me videos and it's like them with like 30 seconds of them not talking, you know, things unedited, coughing, this, that, and the other. The, you can hear the ambient noise of the room. Uh, the camera quality is poor. You can see they're not using their streaming software correctly. Uh, so overlaying themselves or maybe it's just audio, this, that, and the other. Uh, if you want to succeed, go buy yourself the camera you can buy it used this microphone is like 130 dollars new you could buy this this is the same one me ivy j gigs a bunch of people use this microphone go buy it used for like 40 bucks you don't even have to, your camera you can use your iphone or your galaxy or whatever my camera is like 70 bucks uh you can buy it 80 bucks it's a logitech pro what is it it's the something 20 320 420 it ends in 20 720 i think uh, i'm trying to look at the little thing it ends in 20 i bet you can buy that used no question for like 30 bucks there's no question in my mind so make these efforts if or otherwise accept that it's going to be a lot harder for you could you be destined <laughs> sure but then you got to get some good leaks so definitely you've got to go all in at the start not you know thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever these are relatively cheap stuff but they're good enough quality that it works and i put enough time into my photoshop templates that i could knock out thumbnails in 10 minutes and it was you know they had some kind of recognizability right so to interrupt again with thumbnails guys i'm gonna try to be really quick here because i'm sure i'm getting annoying at this point keeping pausing him we're only seven minutes into the video i'll show you with thumbnails, you do not have to spend, sometimes I'll spend, like Dolores helps me with thumbnails a lot, a couple times a week. I'm working on thumbnails, at least one thumbnail myself every single day. Uh, it's taken years to, to feel comfy making them. And even still, I'm constantly looking back at a month ago's thumbnails and being like, oh, this could have been so much better or whatever. Thumbnails are the facade in front of the product, right? They are the wrapping on the candy bar or whatever. They need to be good. They don't have to be professional grade, but they need to be the best you can do at all times, in my opinion. Uh, if if they're amazing and the video sucks, of course it's still going to tank because you're going to get terrible analytics that said everyone clicked on this and then it was trash. Like either you misled people or the quality just didn't match the quality of the thumbnail. However, in these tiny games, of course you can be lazy, like he, he touched on. You know, like the, the 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 effort quality was not always there. But it definitely helps, man. And Mom Bucket hit it out of the park, and I took a big page out of his. My thumbnails don't really look like his, but I loved how you look at a thumbnail and you go, oh, that's a Mom Bucket video because of the font and the blue and yellow color and then the way he did the kind of the, the smoky glow around the outside. It's just like instant, okay, that's his thing. So eventually, when you begin to, to um, associate Mom Bucket with quality, you go, oh, that thumbnail means this video is going to be good. Whether you knew it was Mom Bucket or not, because a lot of people don't take that extra step. I, I hope now people look at my videos and go, ooh, that thumbnail means it's going to be that kind of video. So it's good click, right? So if this is really towards aspiring creators or, or, or creators that are looking for tips, uh, he, he's so good at it. You know, even if you, I, I don't think he has the most aesthetic thumbnails. I don't even think I have the most aesthetic thumbnails. It's not really about aesthetic. It's about branding. It's about consistency. It's about clarity. Definitely put the effort in around those things, not just a video, not just a video content. People's attention spans now are very short. You've got to really capture them very quickly, very early and very consistently. Uh, a small aside, it's a topic I, I like to bring up to people I talk to in person. But I think it's really cool to share with you guys now because it's something I think is really important just in life in general. If you're fortunate enough to meet people who are just really genuinely supportive and they generally want really to do like well, you mentioned here. a pipe dream or, you know, I want to do this thing or I want to try this thing, but I'm not sure. And they just say, hey, just go for it. Uh, for me personally, those are my favorite people to be around. And it's really, really important for you to meet people like that if you want to try and do something on your own. I think we're kind of pushed into just doing whatever is the safest, easiest route a lot. But occasionally you meet people who will just, for some reason, be all in and they they, they just believe in your idea. If you, if you want to do something, then they are supportive. And it's it's really nice when you meet people like that. It means a lot. In Watcher of Realms, for me, that person was Khan Storm's Rage. So a big shout out to you, mate. Thank you. I started out and I said to him, hey, I might make a video because no one's making videos. And he said, yeah, go for it. I made my first video, which for some reason I decided to be a beginner's guide after playing the game for a single month. And he said, hey, I think you've got potential. You know, you can do some things. I wasn't there and he knew it, but he was still supportive and he could see that if I kept going, maybe it would work. And it's not like I'm, you know, crazy successful, but it worked. Like I did, I did. 
I mean, this see- this message, guys, is so kind, and and I I I actually want to extend this to Mabuk and himself. I hope he's watching this, but obviously he's super busy. But like, let's just see. Yeah, these are insanely popular, uh, and you have a good presentation, good speed, and laid back. His his I think Mabuk his style, his cadence, like the the lilt is is great, right? That's what he's touching on there. You will do well. Something like this from someone you respect. It sounds like Karn Storm's rage is such a huge push in making someone feel secure because obviously you know uh you know n- not just okay i'm a i'm a data i'm a data scientist i'm a software engineer for me i was in business school it's like i'm gonna work at a bank or i'm gonna i'm gonna be you know work at some kind of fund it, it feels like very much the path straying from the path feels really scary someone you respect that believing in you is a is a huge huge uh it really it feels like a nice hug about like it's gonna be okay keep keep on keeping on uh it's a huge form of security and i'll just tell you ma bucket and ivy that was that for me i I will say there's many people i can't pull up one comment like this and i'm sure he's just highlighting this one guy and there's many people that were insanely encouraging of him uh but hearing from Ivy at the beginning that she would even want to collab with me, knowing now Ivy is just too kind and would collab with anyone, but knowing she liked my stuff at all, knowing she knew who I was, was so cool to me. And now that she's like my friend and she was just messaging me about helping me out, testing my beta on my website. So like, that's so cool. And that makes you feel so validated. And then I will say the biggest one for me is with Ma Bucket. For me, that would have been like begin end of September, beginning of October uh, last year when we first connected. I started making videos like second week of August. So we're talking. I'd been making videos for two and a half months. I was very much under the impression that he wouldn't like my stuff. Maybe he's just being polite. He's such a nice, well-mannered guy. But I, he seems very genuine. And he really told me, he said, you're really good at what you're doing. You should stick with it. Um, this was on a call that we had. And that really did stick with me. I, I had a reputation. A lot of people really were starting to like me. I mean, I had huge subscriber growth, right? Um, but I, a lot of people, uh, I didn't know if like the big dogs, I was still a new player. I was still 100% free to play, right? I mean, I still am, but you know, no content creator diamonds. I wasn't anybody. Um, and I I thought maybe the big players, the advanced players, the mob buckets, and then <laughs> we'll talk about Deegs later, these mad guys, they weren't going to take me seriously because I was an end game. I was just chipping away at everything. And I, you know, some people would call me cringy for how excited I would get with summons and stuff like that, doing all my viewer summon streams and stuff. And it was exactly the opposite. He was like, I really expect what you're doing. I really see the hustle and you're good at it. And that made, that meant so much. So maybe it'll be cool for Mob Bucket to hear that he was, he was the Karn, he was my Karn Storm Rage. That if I kept going, maybe it would work. And it's not like I'm, you know, crazy successful, but it worked. Like I did, I did well enough. I, I had a, a decent channel, but having someone like him right at the start to say, I, I think you can do it. I think you've got a chance to do it if you put the time in, uh, it meant a lot to me. And I think those are the really important people in life. I think if you're a reasonable person, you are going to doubt yourself enough. You don't need other people casting aspersions or giving you more doubt. If someone says to you, oh, well, you know, aren't you worried about all the time you're going to spend? Or, oh, isn't that, you know, a waste of money to buy a 200 pound, 300 pound webcam? I've already thought about that. I, I made that decision. I did the research. It's my my cash I earned, right? I don't need someone else telling me, oh, are you sure about this thing? So I, I've already been through that. Sometimes it's nice to have reassurance. It's not up to you to decide if you're the guy who is going to tell them if they're right or wrong. Um, I think for most people, they just want some support. So be that guy, be that person who supports your friend. I'm not saying give them money. I'm not saying tell them everything's going to work out. Maybe be a bit supportive. I think it, it matters a lot to a lot of people and it's nice to have people there that do that. I do want to say, if, if your friend's doing something that you feel is like legitimately crazy and you're not seeing any track record of growth or success, it's also a really good move as a friend to be like, maybe this ain't it for you, right? Which I would say, if a creator, if you want to come to me and be like, hey, do you think it's, it, it's good for me? I'll, I'll be honest if you want. But obviously, his friend uh, made that assessment and did that. So don't just blindly leave great advice. But even if someone even has an inkling, you know, and it's or if it's just a hobby and it's not going to affect their life or it's financially, if they can afford the six or seven hundred dollars, six or seven hundred pound webcam or whatever he's describing here, then of course just support people. It's 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 pretty awesome. I do want to say if they're if they're making doo doo poo poo videos, I mean, then they're <laughs> maybe it's not for them. And if you have a friend who does that to you, then you know, give them their juice. They're they're good people. So yeah, that's just a small thing I wanted to throw in there. I think it's important. It's something I've always had a lot of respect for. Um, and a big thank you again to Carl. And I appreciate you, mate. That's kind of my thoughts on content creation. If you want to do it, do it for sure. Don't be shy about it. Just really go for it and find a way to differentiate yourself. For me, I chose two things. My first thing of my goal with every single video was I wanted to respect the viewer's time. You can be the judge of whether or not uh, that worked in the end, but that was what I always wanted to focus on. I noticed a lot of videos would clickbait some thumbnail crap or some title nonsense and then send 15 minutes actually explaining the video title and then it not actually being what they said it was and I thought this is something I'm in constant struggle with right um 
I really do. I really think I deliver on every one of my videos what I say I'm going to do. I also find it really hard just to start a video without explaining what I'm going to do in that video. If you guys have watched, you can go back to my videos from like the past few weeks to a few months ago. I'm trying so much harder to get right into it. Darth Microtransaction, if you know him, he is so good at this. And I even heard, I don't remember where it was. I saw a clip of him, maybe it was a YouTube short or something, saying, yeah, like my big goal is to get into it as fast as possible. It's really, I'm really trying more and more and more, but it is, it feels naked to have nothing. So it's constantly this ba b balancing act. And then to talk about clickbaity stuff, this is a huge internal tur turmoil. I've kind of settled that as long as I'm delivering on what I say in the video, being clickbaity is okay, but God, does it feel disgusting. Do not get me wrong. I'll just talk about with the, the poison nerf video that did quite well. And I do think it was a very good video. People seem to like it. I did say like more terrible news. I believe like it was like, welp, more uh, terrible news again, or something like that was my text. And I was, I pinged back and forth with Mitchell and Dolores about that, uh, two guys that helped me out. Um, and I, I couldn't decide what I wanted to say, but obviously it would have gotten less clicks if it said nerf to <laughs> dot damage uh, coming from uncommon and rare heroes or something like this, right? Or more realistically, I was like nerf to poison. It would, I would just, I'm at the point where I have a nice floor. I'd still get many clicks and the video was good, I think. So it would then perform in post analytics and get pushed more. That's all silly YouTube stuff. But obviously clips were improved because I went for like, well, more bad news, poo poo moonton, right? But it, it is really hard because it's like clicks are what we are in the business of, but also we want to make good stuff and honest stuff. And it is really hard. Um, and Mamba could never really ever went that route, uh, with the text from what I've seen. So power to him. I'm still thinking if I want to stick with that at all, I, there's a million times I could go a lot crazier into it and choose not to, but yeah, respect, respect to him. Cause it is really, really hard. Uh, but yeah, he, he, he did a, it sucks to see him go, man. Killer, killer content creator. Well, that's one, it's disrespectful. So I don't want to do that anyway. And two, it's, it's just so disingenuous that you're going to lose goodwill with your community. So I wanted to focus on not doing that. If possible, I wanted to give my immediate thought at the start of the video. I didn't want to force people to watch longer. The way I saw it is if you're going to try and make money from YouTube, it's a long term game. If you're trying to nickel and dime people on a short term video. This I find really interesting. Uh, and again, such respect to him. I never was intending to make money from YouTube. We'll talk about it later because you do make a lot of money. And he, he does explain that explicitly. But uh, this is really interesting. I, I just always just wanted to have success. And that would be just having I, I kind of I guess I already have accomplished it, just having a voice in the community. But uh, it's cool to hear someone that did have the intention, not that it was the reason, but developed the intention to like, let's make money. Of course, I, I like making money now from it, but never was uh, the goal. You know, then your long term plan isn't that good, in my opinion. I think you, you want to build such a strong brand recognition that, hey, this person is making content that I want to watch, uh, even if it's only for a minute. I think that's going to be better for you long term than saying, hey, I can get more views out of people per video if I do this thing, which might slightly annoy them now. But hey, they'll forget it. For me, I, I didn't want to do that. So yeah, for me, number one was making sure that the videos respected people's time. And the second thing was I was quite anxious with the global release coming up for Watcher of Realms because I thought, hey, at the time I was like 500 subscribers. I've been this part is so cool. I've been doing it like seven months at the, at the point I'm referring to. To me, at least. And I thought, as soon as all the big players come in, I'm going to get completely blown out of the water. I won't have anything over them. They can watch my videos, get the information that I had from Beta, use it as their own, and no one will know any wiser because my channel was so small. So I thought, I have to find some way to keep viewers until my channel accumulates subscribers. And at that point, then I have some actual power, right? Some staying power. So my solution was, hey, I'm a programmer for a living. I'll make a quick website and make my tier list there. Because I thought, if I make a tier list anywhere else, you can copy paste it out and nick it, right? If I make it a feature on a website, you can't copy paste the whole website. It's not that simple. And then I kind of slowly built stuff. But yeah, so I guess that branches on to the topic of the website. But the main reason I made the website was purely as a backdrop to my YouTube channel to try to maintain growth early on so it wasn't poached off me by bigger creators who had a lot more clout. So it was entirely a business decision is what I'm saying. And it's it's brilliant. So basically he's like, I, I've put in all this work. I have all these expertise. Like what if Ash comes here? And not that Ash would do that, but Jack's my video or Jack's my idea, right? Uh, again, not that Ash would do, but this is, you know, someone like that, some big dog from another game. Instead, go watch Ash's videos. Go watch all of, a all of Ash's early summoning videos. Every single one he pulls up Mob Bucket's website. Is this hero good? Oh, let's find out, guys. And he, and he goes on Mob Bucket's video. I mean, it's, just, it's, just, it's just brilliant. Like, thinking ahead, and then it, it, he's going to talk about it. It went so much more than he thought. It gave him all the clout he needed, and his views only went up. And he completely, completely dominated the space. It's funny, because obviously I have my website coming out in about four or five days, which is insane. It's coming out on Friday. So I guess four days, less than four days. Oh, my God. Uh, but... We'll get into the website now, but listen to how he describes how he did it and why he did it, and then I'll describe how I am doing it and why I'm doing it, and it's, it's crazy. This, this guy is so brilliant. I'm a wicked capitalist. 
and it worked somehow. Actually, everything I envisioned six months prior to launch actually worked better than I expected. So that's pretty cool when a plan comes together. Um, but yeah, that was the motivation for the website. But as for the website itself, it was very hastily coded over spare hours and weekends, pretty much, because I've been working full time since, you know, whenever I've always been working full time. So I've never really had a bunch of time to commit to content creation. So yeah, the website was pretty hastily made. I didn't test it for mobiles, really, or tablets or you know, even some laptops, nothing for Apple at all. So yeah, apologies, it was a janky experience for a lot of people. I just, I didn't have the time to do it properly. So um, apologies, but it was kind of fun and it seemed to help some people. So I'm really glad it was useful. Um, I think it was probably the thing that made my channel work in the end. Cause like That's just not true. Like it definitely helped, but like he was gonna succeed regardless. Go back and watch his old videos. He, he was gonna. He said, otherwise I would just, I would get some views at the start. I would get some subscribers, but without something that differentiated me, I don't think it would have worked as well. I think having a website, which is hard to copy is a really effective means of doing stuff. So that's why I did it, it seemed to work. Um, but as for the website now, I just don't have the time to update. I've had a bunch of people ask me about it. I've been considering doing some stuff with it. But truthfully, any update I make now is going to be meaningless because I just don't know anything anymore. I think a lot of people try to market themselves as, I'm really smart, watch my content, or I'm really smart, my tier list makes sense. But ultimately, it's all just about what you put into the game is what you get out, right? If I make a guide now, just because I'm a bucket and I made videos before, it doesn't mean I know shit now. I know nothing about Water of Realms in the current day. I also really want to go out of my way to touch on the fact that Ma Bucket built his entire website completely by himself. And it's incredible. He did such a fantastic job. I'm very proud of my website, and I do think we're taking things to a new level. However, I had to pay $5,250 to a web developer. We have a team of seven people volunteering. It's a crazy endeavor. And I'm just shockingly impressed by what he accomplished. It's amazing. He's, he's an amazing guy. Yeah, you really you really have to be in it. You know, we have so many things actively evolving. Like I have to update my my tier list uh from from literally 1 month ago, right? Like L Lust was added. An assault is now viable in Arbiter Frost. Just a couple things that that pop into your head, right? Things are always Sirene is an arena meta. You know, these are things that you have to constantly revisit and you have to know, and it's not just a couple things. It's many, many, many things. Uh so that's why with my website, let's just plug that. So we will have an up-to-date website all the time now, at least for the foreseeable future. No, all the time now. Um, I will have monthly updates to the tier list. We'll probably do them in a, some kind of collaborative stream way. But you can see when you're out of it, it's it's super hard because it's there's way too much like info circling around and things are ever changing with all the different nerfs and updates and content that gets added, right? Like if if Ma, like uh, Mabucket couldn't probably wouldn't know how to approach Lasir right now, right? Because he's gonna get an enormous boost tomorrow when when Gear Eight Four comes out, which he's not playing the game, so it, it, it's 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 a real thing. It's really or assumptions I make now are going to be way out and for me to make any actual useful assumptions or ratings or any of that stuff I would need to dump a lot of hours into the game that I just don't have so he really downplays that right it's not a lot of hours it's it's tens and tens and tens of hours it'd probably be to catch back up having missed three months to do it to the level and the standard he holds himself to this is probably a, a, a big reason why it's like I can't can't even bother I mean if you're talking at least I don't know four to six aggressive weeks of gameplay which you know no, knowing people it's that's 200 hours or 300 hours i mean that's ridiculous so yeah um i'm not gonna be updating the website because i just don't have enough knowledge and if i update it based on someone else's opinions then it's not really my list anymore it feels a bit disingenuous um and yeah i'd rather just let it slowly die you know it's, i'm happy to fade i'll just say really quickly for anyone who's like if they think it's like like I love supporting creators, I always put on people's videos and like them in the background. The reason I don't watch other people's stuff, especially when it regards opinions on the game, is I don't want to be disingenuous. I don't want to watch if Mike has a guide about this, then I do it and I like jack his idea or I accidentally steal one of his thoughts. Like I want to have everything completely novel for myself. That is why I don't want too much backseating. Also, I want to enjoy the game, but I also don't want to seek out other people's guides. I, I still don't know what the Torador cheese is. I know it exists. I know it's like Destined and More Guides is two of their big videos, but yeah, it just I'm very much about, you know, I want to have my true honest opinion, whether that is correct or not. And that needs to be learned yourself. Yeah, you know, that's that's fine with me. So yeah, unfortunately, the website is not really going to get any updates because I just don't know enough about the game and I'm not willing to spend the time to know enough about the game in its current time. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is what's next for the channel. Um, this, this video feels kind of robotic. Sorry for being so formal about everything. I've, maybe I'm just being awkward, but I have actually genuinely really... You're not. You're being charming. ...really enjoyed doing this YouTube stuff. You, obviously, you're going to get trolls. You're going to get some mean people, but overwhelmingly, the vast, vast majority of people I've talked to have been really kind, really friendly, really helpful, really polite. And I truly, really do appreciate that, guys. It's honestly, it's a really nice thing. Um, and I think the community for this game is really good, both in the comment section on YouTube, as well as in the discords, and sometimes in the game chat, though, stay away from channel one. Maybe stay away from channel one. Shout out to Earl. Um, I would say 
this game, when we when I started, and probably his memories of this game, the community, to me, was unmatched. Of course we have trolls, of course we have know-it-all jerks, arseholes, as a Brit might say, but so supportive and excited about the game. I do think now we've probably gotten closer to what the norm is, like what you see in a game like Raid Shadow Legends, at least as I remember that community. But still, I do think what Watcher Realms community is exceptional. However... You know, as as something to aspire to, to return to that thing where we're all just a bit happier and a bit less grumpy and, you know, looking at the bigger picture. It's so easy to say, like, I'm quitting spending, I'm quitting the game, this and this, because Boreas or Poison or whatever happens, right, or drop rates. Uh, overall, it is a gotcha game, and this is going to be one of the things we finish off with, so this is kind of my way of ensuring it. And for that space, I do think they're doing an excellent job. So I think ma maintaining a somewhat positive bias is a important thing we can do for the health of the game at least i think i can do i try to making content for the last year is something that's just a really cool thing for me in life i like collecting these moments of memories like hey i did this thing and it was it was cool and i grew a bit and i learned a bunch and i met some people that's a uh, sorry to interrupt again that's something i like uh i've thought a lot about like is this going to be like my career is this going to be a a year or two of my life? Is this going to be years of my life? Is this going to be decades in my life? Or will this be, you remember that one time in 22, 23 when I did that stuff? Or 23, 24, I'm losing, I'm losing my mind. 23, 24 when I did that stuff wasn't that crazy. And that's kind of what he's touching on here. So I think already for me, not to make it about me, but to make it about me, it's been a huge win, Wantra Realm. So thank you guys so much. Uh, all the financial stuff and fun stuff that has come cool, but just the entire experience and the engagement has really been, been fun. And that's really what I'm hearing from, from Ma Bucket here. I think that's what life's about, right? I don't. When something turns into a job, it's not really the goal anymore. Because that's that's one of the reasons I quit was it was starting to feel like a job. Once you start paying attention to the money, and the money is legit, by the way. If, if anyone has any doubts about it, having 10k subscribers or having videos averaging in the thousands of views in this genre is legitimate money. It is it is nothing to to scoff at. You actually earn legit money. So um, yeah. I've I've thought about some Darth Mark microtransaction had a video I really really respected. Uh, I don't know when it was. 2020 it had to be at maybe end of 2020 where he just showed everybody his youtube like on a video he just showed everybody all his youtube payouts and his analytics and all that stuff i don't know if i want to go that far but what i will say is it's pretty interesting how much this is a i want to say maybe lucrative isn't the word but a completely well compensated job if you if, if you perform at it to to a certain level like i i literally do just from youtube ads it wouldn't be a huge salary but i am making like what would be equivalent to like a normal salary for a lot of jobs and that's remarkable and i will say if that shocks anyone what he's going to get into when he talks about rpm that's revenue per mile that's how much they pay you per thousand my rpm right now is coming up on ten dollars right so basically a penny per view that might not sound like too much get us try to think about how many views we actually get Right. I do believe I certainly am the most prolific, not meaning best or anything, just in terms of quantity and number of views, because I put a lot of videos and my videos lately do get a lot of views um, for the space. Uh, I do believe I'm the most prolific in the space. Uh, but like someone like me or Ivy that puts out consistently a lot of videos, get solid views, the RPM combined, all that you've got yourself. It's a lot of money. It, it like, you know, it's not a millionaire or anything, but it's it actually is real money. So if people say you take it too seriously, it's just a game. It's also our job. Yeah, it's it's hard not to get suckered in by the appeal of the cash and to think, oh, if I make more videos, if I do you know summon videos, because they pay more money. But actually, by the way, you get for some reason the advertisers are willing to spend more on videos for summoning. So that's actually one of the reasons I stopped making summon videos because my assumption was, if advertisers are spending more on summon videos, is that because people who watch summon videos are more likely to spend money? So I for me it felt like first off, yes, for sure that's why. I will say the one thing I still don't, to this day don't understand my summon videos just don't do that well. I don't know if I don't like compared to Ivy or Dan or people where they're some of their best videos. Some of these are never my best videos. So this is complete aside, completely having to do with me. But it's always been I've never understood uh, why why that is. So I've never felt this, but they do pay slightly better. He's dead on dead on. I was selling up meaning per thousand views. The rate is slightly higher. So let's say it was eight bucks on a normal video or six bucks on a normal video, it'd be a little bit higher on a summons video. There's no doubt about that. My community, again, it's all a baseless assumption, but it felt a bit weird that sometimes summon videos would have like twice the, uh, I think it's revenue per mile, they call it, which is like per thousand views. And I, it just it didn't sit very well with yes. me. So that's why I didn't do any summon videos for quite a while. But anyway, yeah, I didn't want the channel to be all about money. I didn't want it to be all about training. I will say very quickly, uh, with regard to wanting to put out more videos once you see the money coming in, for me, the video is not the motivation. The, 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 there is motivation to continue to be prolific and continue to produce content. 
uh, because I want to remain successful, now also financially successful. However, as you're gonna see with this video, I will tell you this video will probably make about between 18 and $35, which is something, and it's a lot more than other smaller creators in the space. I say in the space, because outside of the space, I'm a minuscule Z-list creator, right? Uh, however, with me, videos like this are just important, and he talked about developing goodwill with the community and whatever. I think having a nice library, library and variety of videos is so invaluable to having good content. Again, this is advice for aspiring creators. If an aspiring creator, you want to come and every video you do is like summons and reading news updates and, I don't know, showing a guide on 321, right? It's going to be useless to you. You need to try all different kind of things and then you can develop a niche if you want or you can be like me where I try to do a couple main things and not all of them will perform the same, but you will cultivate a community because you're drawing people from different places. But also I think, I think people, I hope people respect that you're willing to make things that you find interesting, you find important, even if it's not going to perform. This video will not perform. Like I, 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 as I'm filming this, I'm 50 minutes into footage right now. I guarantee you this video will not perform, but it will perform for me because I think you let me know in the comments if this is you. If you made it to minute 40, whatever we're at right now after I edit this down, you probably enjoyed it. And uh, maybe it made you more more interested in me or maybe you at least learned something or you had fun or you were entertained or you got liked seeing Ma Bucket again because he watched his video and you wanted to watch it again in a different way. To me, that's super valuable. Uh, you know, making a super niche guide that's I know is going to get 2,000 views when I could make a super approachable boom, boom guide that would get 12,000 views. You can't do that all every time. At least that's how I see it. So I would say it's not really about like putting out more content for that content to re raise the baseline. I would say it's more about diversifying content and raising your floor by having a strong library of content. And right when this video ends, I think I just decided now I'd decide if I wanted to. I'm going to show you a couple examples of videos. This will be like a little sneak fun thing at the end for people that made it this far. I'm not even going to tease it and aspiring creators to see kind of how it works, at least from how I see it, because he's going to talk about in one second if he wants to make videos like to teach people how to make content. I don't know if I want to do that, but I really do like giving advice on it because I feel like I've amassed all this knowledge in like the you know 12 to 18 hours a day I've been working for the past eight months, literally, <laughs> except for one day where I only worked the six hours when I said I was going to take a day off. Sorry, guys, I didn't. Um, and yeah, I, I, I do think it's really valuable for people to see that because I feel like let me touch on that when we get there. Let's 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 let the bucket take this thing home. I mean, what a guy. And to make it a full-time job or an income, and it started to feel that way towards the end, uh, which is why I kind of stopped doing it. But I actually did really enjoy making videos on YouTube, and I'm not sure I'm done with making videos on YouTube. I'm pretty certain I'm done with Gacha. Um, it's not like I'm quitting Water of Realms and going to raid or anything else. I've had a bunch of emails from people saying, "Hey, we'll pay you a bunch of money if you make a video for this game." Sometimes I respond, and I'm like, "Ah, pay me more." And then a lot of the time they say yes, and then I just don't. That is so true. I'll just tell you, I got an offer from a game the other day and they were like, we'll pay 250 bucks for a video. And I said, I want five, I want more. And they gave me 550 bucks. I still said, again, I did say no, but it is crazy. So if you're, if you're, let's say you're Ronaldo or Destined or War Guys and people are reaching out now because you're, you're really doing great stuff and having success. If you are three, three are watching, don't sell, short sell yourself. They're reaching out because they want you. Don't go crazy and say like, no, I demand $10,000 per minute. Like, of course not. But uh, be like, oh, that's a little bit below my quote. Can you do better? Something like this or or get management. Something like, I mean, it, it's really true. It really is. I respond. So, but it's interesting to find out, you know, I know it's very early. If I made a video on something, say to play a game, because I played Eternal Evolution very briefly and a bunch of people followed me to play it. And then a bunch of people spent a bunch of money on the game. The idea of an influencer is legit. People will actually spend money based on a YouTuber's opinion or based on their time spent playing a game. So uh, it made me very cautious and careful with how I directed my attention on the channel. Because if you have a bunch of eyes on you, you do actually have a lot of uh, ability to affect where money goes, which is kind of scary, right? But anyway, yeah, I didn't want to do that stuff. I didn't want the channel to be about just making money. I wanted it to be something I enjoyed. But I do enjoy making videos. So what I'm trying to get to is I think I would like to keep making videos. Obviously nowhere near as frequently as I used to. That means I can't really do it on a game, especially not one like this that gets fairly regular updates, has a bunch of meta discussions and testing. And all when I show the, 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 the charts at the end from my YouTube analytics, you will see that because so much of this game, you will see how views grow over time. Finding an evergreen video, as I like to, to say, like for example, if you guys have ever seen my 219 definitive guide that has mall on it, this video gets tick, 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 200 views or 100, 150 to 250 views a day, every day. 
no exceptions. That is such an anomaly in the space, as you're going to see. So that's what he's going to try to say. To stay on top of the gotcha horse, this kind of like live update kind of game horse, and be successful, it is an endless grind. So that's the other thing. The reason people want to put out a lot of videos, or at least to speak for myself, the reason I want to put out a lot of videos uh, is because I'm scared that the god, the YouTube algorithm, will smite me and, and, and frown upon me if I stray too far from what they've deemed it makes me marketable and makes me good and makes me successful. All that stuff. I just don't have the time. Uh, so I'm not sure. I generally don't know. I'm not going to delete the channel. I'm not going to delete the website. Um, I would advise, unless something drastic happens to the website, it's probably not going to be particularly useful. Um, but I'll leave it up because why not? Um, and as for the channel, I'm not going to delete it, but I'm considering repurposing it into something else. I'm not sure what the something else is. I might make videos explaining stuff, maybe programming stuff to do with making your own website if you want to make stuff like this yourself maybe to do with content creation in general about just some principles or learnings or experiences that I've had that might be useful to people. Or maybe about Japan, because I've been here four months now, coming up to five months actually. Um, and it's really cool. But there's a load of interesting things and a lot of um, kind of culture shocks, as people say. They're not the ones that I expected, but they're, they're definitely there. Um, but overall, I'm really, really, really enjoying the place. So it's something I was considering. But there's a bunch of people making videos on all of these topics. My two cents, if you have me watching Ma Bucket, uh, I think you would be successful in any of that. I do think... You are so shockingly and aggressively pleasant and easy to listen to. I do think it lends itself really well to this kind of commentary guide style content. So hearing of you making like a programming guide or a tutorial on how to do some programming trick. Can you guys tell I don't know anything about coding and programming? But whatever that would be, I could see that being a home run. It's already so I'm not, it's not like I have a big burning desire. Originally, I was planning to make a channel on Pathfinder 2nd Edition because I'm a big nerd. But uh, again, I decided not to do that because I didn't feel like I knew enough about it. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'd like to make more videos in the future, but I want them to be higher quality. I'd like to spend more time editing them, having infographics or data or something, but in a nice, cool, displayed way, rather than just pumping out videos every day or every week or whatever. So it's something I'm considering doing. Um, if you're interested, let me know if you think there's something that I could make. A Definitely go to his comments and let him know. Like I, I've already messaged him and I've DM'd him and we've talked there personally. Uh, I, he, he's just such a great guy. So if you want to support him, that's a great way to support him. Like I said, just watch this video on loop, right? Not my video, his video on loop. Video one that might be interesting to you. But also get in the comments and say, yeah, we want to see more of your stuff, assuming that's what you want. Whether it's programming, content creation in Japan, or whatever it might be. Um, if you're not interested in anything from me that's not Water of Realms, then you're probably best off unsubscribing if you are subscribed. Uh, I do appreciate your time with me, though. It has been a pleasure. And I have no grudge against you whatsoever if you are saying goodbye at this point. And if you do say subscribed, there is a good chance I just don't make a video again. <laughs> this could be the final one. But we'll see. It has been a, a truly a really I'll, good I'll tell experience. you guys right now. Just knowing him somewhat, I would be shocked if he comes back to Watcher of Realms. In a good way, I, I'd be excited, but I would be shocked. And we're going to talk about that in one second. But when we talk about this gotcha thing he's about to wrap up with, but I would be shocked, completely shocked, if he comes back to Watcher of Realms. A bunch of really, really cool people. There are a bunch of people in the community that are just really fun members of the community to have around. I think the one that stands out quite a lot to most people because he just has way too much time. Of all the people to shout out, of all the viewers and community members and players, the, per the name he's about to name... My God. His Deegs. But I enjoyed your degeneracy. One that stands out quite a lot to most people because he just has way too much time is Deegs to have around. I think the one that stands out quite a lot to most people because he just has way too much time is Deegs. Way too but much time is the big Deegs. takeaway there. It's a pleasure having you in my Discord, lurking in your Discord, and seeing you flaming random people on the official Discord. I think he's a pretty cool guy, generally. Deep down in that cold heart of his, he's a fun guy. I think he's a good guy. But no, there's a, there's a good community. There's a bunch of cool people. There's a bunch of cool content creators. Ivy League Gaming is a lovely, lovely person. She was very kind to me when I started content creation. All right, I'm going to take this moment because uh, he's going to talk about me next, so it doesn't matter. Ivy, Ivy. And look at that. Ivy just hit 30K. Freaking amazing. Dude, I Ivy is, she is so kind. Like, Ivy really does. I, I do sincerely feel this way, and I try to do it myself, but I also try to emulate her. Like, a rising tide raises all ships. And and I, I, I believe that, but Ivy has taught me that even more because she will bring anyone on her channel if she thinks it will help them and it's valuable to the community. And I've always tried to do the same. I've had many people on my channel with hundreds of subs or, or even in the tens of subs, right? Uh, and Ivy does that for a lot of people, right? Uh, Ivy, you know, what Ma Bucket ended up being this behemoth in our space quite immediately, but Ivy was the the vet, right? And then she, as he says here, she was super kind to him and super helpful to him. Ivy to me was just, she's done everything for me. Ivy, Ivy and her husband bought me a green screen, man. It's so nice. Uh, she was my first collab. It's still my most viewed video, even though I think both of us would cringe at that. It's definitely not one of our best, either of our best videos at all, but it was a lot of fun. 
Um, and, and on top of all that, I, Ivy hooked me up with the, the brand manager we work with, which is, it's just a large way I'm able to keep making these videos and support myself. It's not much money, but it does help make the difference. And I don't want to deal with that brand stuff. I didn't want to deal with any of this business stuff. So, uh, Ivy is just so nice. Like I, I'd, so I will just, I will just riff about Ivy whenever I can. Uh, her, her and Odd One are such great people, uh, wishing her like infinite health and infinite health, uh, to the baby as well. Um, so definitely guys just go spam Ivy's videos nonstop as well. I think the person who deserves his flowers is fastidious. The guy puts in a lot of effort. As I was saying earlier, you only really get out what you put in and he really does put the hours into the game. So definitely a lot of respect for fastidious. A couple of other content creators that are, Thank you. are pretty good and up and coming if you want to go and check them out. War Guides and Ronaldo Plays. I've heard a lot of good stuff about them and I ask people in my Discord, hey, are there other channels you would recommend when I do make a video? Look how similar their sub count is. Isn't that remarkable? Well, I met both of them at the exact same time. I had them both on the channel at a very, very similar time. Amazing growth from these two. But it's really interesting to see. Like, they're just, they're lockstep, man. Look at that. They're right next to each other. What's that difference of 220? That's, that's great. 120, excuse me. That's yeah, crazy. Saying goodbye. And those are the two channels everyone shouts out. So, great you check those guys out. I've heard a lot of really good things about them. I think you'll have a lot of fun with the game going forward in future. Uh, I won't be around in it, but I do genuinely wish you guys a lot of fun. I wish you luck with the casino. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in future in another video. But if not, genuinely, thank you guys so much. It's been a, a pleasure. I wish everyone happiness. I wish you success. And uh, I wish you luck. Thank you guys very much. It's been a true pleasure. All the best, guys. Bye-bye. So I just didn't mean to pause it for half a second early there. Great, great way to end it. I like this picture of him. Uh, I'm going to have to take a little screenshot of that one second. But when he said good luck with the casino, I know truly that is how he feels uh, from having talked to him uh, off camera obviously and i feel the same way i mean it's i love watcher films i love the game watcher films i kind of think i despise gotcha games and i certainly despise a lot of the practices i mean that has been endlessly apparent through a lot of stuff I've, i mean since the beginning since i was you know far less than i am now and certainly not even in the shadow of a mob bucket right i've been on this rates thing and it's it's not that not coming from a place of it's going to make me money or it's going to get me good vibes with the devs or something like that it disturbs me i people i Money it is an uncomfortable thing to talk about, but people spend their money. They deserve to know what they're getting. And it is a totally, it's not even a casino because casinos aren't even this aggressively rigged. It's a rigged casino uh, and it's disturbing. So I'll just say, he says he doesn't know if he's going to stick with the gotcha. I'll just announce that right now. I really don't have any strong intentions of, of sticking in the gotcha space. Uh, I am planning to try Dragon, Dragon Air again because literally every single person I know has jumped on it and is loving it. So clearly I'm missing something. So I need to revisit that. But then I will say, like, big plans for, like, my future. Besides, I'm not leaving Watcher of Realms at all, but as I grow whatever is my channel and my brand and what I'm doing here, I know Withering of Waves should be coming out in the next two or three months. That is a game that's, like, gotcha, but kind of gotcha adjacent because it has, like, a big open world and has, like, kind of very live combat systems. I'm hoping it's going to be, like, a souped-up version of Genshin with, like, actually interesting gameplay. Um so I'm hoping to, you know, eventually move away from that because it disturbs me. And I know explicitly it disturbed Ma Bucket as well. I mean, the idea that you can post a summon video and then it convinces someone to spend a few hundred bucks is disturbing. And it's something I, I wrestle with and I, I, I struggle with. But huge thank you to Ma Bucket. Like I said, for the end here, I am going to cut right here. We're going to pick it back up in my YouTube studio and I'm going to show you some behind the scenes stuff that you might find interesting. Uh, but Ma Bucket, what a man. What an awesome picture. What a guy. Uh, thank you. To you, Ma Bucket, for the, the ways you have helped me, and thanks to the community. And uh, thank you guys who made it this late into the video. Let's get now into the YouTube analytics stuff. Alrighty, guys, like I said, I want to wrap up in YouTube Studio with a little behind the scenes discussion of what content creation is kind of like, kind of reflecting on some of the things Ma Bucket touched on, and also some of the things I've seen smaller creators struggling with, with getting burned out, and explain to viewers and anyone who's interested why you could feel this way and this is kind of what content creation looks like at least in this very specific game but more broadly in this specific gotcha space so you can see i get a lot of views uh, i'm not just blowing smoke i i definitely get the most views in launcher of realms this is just from videos over the last 28 days you can go to live so this is including people watching them live and then watching it on live replay still over 50,000 views obviously a much higher uh, duration for when people are watching live uh, but you can see this all combines into uh, i don't know why it's not telling me uh very size we'll just do the math a very sizable number of views a very sizable number of views it's about 430,000 uh is where i'm settling and that's over four weeks so over a month i'm getting about 450 to 460,000 views a month with a decent rpm as ma bucket discussed it is a lot of money but what did those views look like and what are those videos that generate the views look like so i've pulled up a couple examples here to try to show people why this is such a uh, specific space that is hard to 
feel secure in and and thrive in and rest on your laurels and i'm sure mob bucket if we were to pull up his analytics it would look pretty crazy uh, i do think his analytics would have some pretty crazy spikes and slopes and things like that and i'll explain why let's look at the first big video i ever made it's the biggest video to date that i've ever made which is crazy to me uh it really isn't a great video i think me and ivy have pretty good chemistry when we make videos together we sincerely are friends so i think people enjoyed that but we were both total noobs i mean when did this video come out let's let's see uh sometime towards the end of august so i had been playing launcher of realms for probably three weeks ivy had been playing it for maybe just over a month and we here we are saying build these heroes now i do think there was some great advice in there so maybe that's it but you know if you look go back watch it the production quality is not there it's just me and ivy doing our best i didn't have a green skin or anything this was before the ever generous romanian couple ivy and odd one sent me one and before war guides taught me how to use a virtual green screen and we're just doing our best or, ivy's always doing great i'm doing my best right but you can see uh big spike in the beginning this was like a, a top video for me back then getting 4,000 views on a video 5,000. this that was pretty darn high for me you can see typical look at that typical in this period uh let's see we're talking i was just getting towards about a thousand i still probably wasn't even at the point where i was getting a thousand views a video which is which is a very interesting metric to measure by because now i'm basically all but guaranteed that i get 2,000 views on my absolute worst laziest video if it's about watcher films uh, not that I do those, but, you know, maybe lazy in the word, but when I do really niche content, like I could do, uh, you know, my trust guide has 8,000 views right now. Like that, that would never have happened. It would, it, back then it would have been at 800, right? So it's something to, it's nice as a creator to have these benchmarks. But looking at that, kind of trailed off, and what happened around here, if I'm not mistaken, this is when Ash and Hell Hades came to the game. I think so. Because uh, all of a sudden, whoa, people are interested because there's a bunch of new players. And then it's mellowed out, and it performs. It does fine. It does fine. Uh, and it's interesting, right? The last 60 minutes. Four people watched it this hour. For a video from August that's in this space, as you're going to see, that's crazy. So over the last 48 hours, it's averaging about 41 views. It is averaging 41 views a day, right? You can see there's a nice chunk of money. It's not too crazy uh, if you're used to RPMs with this number of views for it to equate to this amount of money. But a lot of the big views were up front when I had, they didn't value me as much. They didn't find me as marketable. Uh, but you can see huge subscriber growth. Again, Ivy is the queen. Thank you so much, Ivy. Uh, not 100% having to do with her, but close to it. So thank you, Ivy. But you can see the subscriber growth has just continued. So at least this initial bump, these 80 or 90 or whatever, that's that's an that's the Ivy that's that Ivy Lee magic, man. What more do you need to know? Let's go to a totally different kind of video. My other, I think it's my second most popular video ever, and totally different. This video is my biggest home run ever, which is really feels really good because this is kind of to go back to Ma Bucket. I did kind of plan this. I do think. Frickin' call me on it. I think I'm the best Gear A2 player in the world. I'm gonna be cocky for a second. Not because I'm the best player, not because I'm this and this and this. I would legitimately be beyond shocked. I would be gobsmacked and gooped and floored if anyone has played, even approaching the amount of Gear A2 I have played. There, there's no way. I struggled with it a lot personally when I started doing it. I've made endless content on it, and to this day I do about five, four to ten, let's say, because it depends on the week, Gear A2 takeovers every single week and that has never stopped so this is one where i was like i want to have a perfect gear aid 2 guide that is clear as day where i use only epics and i really minimize things and i help people and i really think i did that's what happened so it might be hard to see because the video has been out for a while let me zoom in a bunch uh and maybe that can help people like i said guys it's gonna be a long ass video it's probably not what you knew you were signing up for so you see this gray bar this is the range so i don't know exactly how they calculate it, but it's saying within this period so this video and the nine videos released before it you could expect after whatever this is 95 days it would be between 4.1 and 5.2 this is obviously at that point was over 24,000 views what's interesting to note is we were under the range curve when this released i worked really hard on this video i had the idea for this video for a very long time and it didn't perform uh, so you can see after the first day i would have expected 3.3 to 4.3 thousand views we came in at just over 2600 not a catastrophe but for a video that i thought was going to be part of the heart of my channel and i really cared about this was supremely disappointing well you can see it broke over the curve right around 16 days and then ever since then it's a it's a home run video and mob i'm sure has a lot of these a lot of these i'd be interested to see if the slope maintains but you can see this is damn near linear picking up about like i said 150 to 250 views a day right now we're coming in at what is this 244 and a half views per day over the past two days on a video that came out 
over 100, about 110 days ago. That's crazy in this space. So this is very aspirational, but not every video can be this. So how do you support yourself? Not every video is gonna make $210, absolutely not. So how do you support yourself? Here is a totally different kind of video over here. This is a video I did when I, the first time I ever had Destin on the channel, this is kind of how we became friends. Uh, it was like, hey, you're the leaker. I've got a great scoop. I've been looking for a reason to bring you on the channel. Look at this. That's about as steep a vertical as I've ever had, ever. One day, I'm, this also can speak to the health of the game, right? We don't have a huge player base. I uh, I think nearly everyone that watches content on YouTube knows who I am at this point. So they're gonna, they already know if they're gonna click on me or not. A large proportion obviously do, whether you like me or not, that is a fact. So after one day, after one day, this thing was at 11.2K. Whereas my range, and this is when I was performing really well. This is a great month for me in January or February, whenever this was, February 1st, it looks like. Uh, you know, end of January, beginning of February. I, I was January was a really weak month for me, and then the end really picked up, and then with all the lust stuff, it just kept going. Uh, I had a dip in March, and now it's really strong again. Um, you can see the even my best videos in this range were at 5.9. This basically was doubling that. That's crazy, right? Well, what has happened since? It was at 11.2 after one day in the what's it, 52 days or so, 51, 52 days since it's gotten less than 4,000 views. Compare that. Compare that to the mall video, which after one day, uh, this is not the mall video, where is it? Where are you, mall? At the mall video, which after about one day was at 2,600, has literally done more than 10x that in the following 100 plus days, right? It really goes to show you that there are different kinds of videos. This video, it actually has some valuable long-term information because I discussed hero rates, but it very much was the flavor of the hour, right? It was like lust, arrogance, new banner, look at this, confirmed, boo, 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 spicy, Destin's there, ooh, a lot of people that don't like me like Destin, that's cool, right? Uh, that, that was a nice little crossover, amazing. And then by, look at this, by nine days, it had already died. Basically, by day two, it was dead. And it's in the next subsequent 50-something days, one view over the past 48 hours. One view. And that, that's kind of to tell you what it is like as a conjugator. Huge hit. Great. Move the hell on. It's done. It's dead. Dead in the water. You got your little money. That's great. That's one of my highest earning videos ever. But move the heck on. And not every video is going to be your... your leaking or leak getting the leaker on the channel of destin you can confirm the banner and you've got the rates of the banner for the most anticipated banner in the history of the game and you can see the subscriber growth completely pales in comparison to ivy this brings new eyeballs so a different reason for the video even though they both performed this kind of reconfirms the eyeballs or maybe the couple destin viewers are coming over right but you know for the viewership it's it is what it is so that's just telling you another kind of video a final video to look at, this is kind of an in-between, right? This is These are all high-performing videos, but I want to show you how they all vary. This is a video I did with Ash. Uh, Overpowered Heroes, the absolute best. We went faction by faction. It was my first collab with Ash. Everyone loves Ash. The thumbnail's kind of hideous, but that is what it is. And you can see, great initial performance. I had Ash on the channel. Back then, we were looking at 2.1 to 2.8 as the range after the first day, about 5.3K. So nearly doubling it again, kind of looking like the Destin video. What is the difference though? It kept on trucking. It was more ever, it was more similar to evergreen content because we're talking about, oh, these are the best epics for the faction, the legendaries, so on and so on. I also had just done a collab with Ash, which definitely brought me a bunch of huge new eyes. I got a bunch from his channel and then you can see 139. That's kind of huge. Moreover, you're going, you're going, going. Pretty steep, right? And then it really does flatten out. Back here, per day, we were looking at much closer to one, two, three hundred a day. But now, I don't think this video is that good. I went back and watched part of it. I didn't, I, I, it was pretty early on. I, this wasn't such a great video. It, it really wasn't. Um, it was nice. I think me and Ash got along well. But it's not the most valuable video, and the, the algorithm has learned that. And look at that. We're at, we're at about 21 views a day. Compare that to my video with Ivy, which clearly they like more. We're at 41. And then compare that to a truly successful piece of content in this space. We're at about 250. So that's kind of just to pull back the curtain on it, but the way Ma Bucket would feel, the way I feel, the way a lot of up and coming creators feel once you start having metrics like this, right? You want videos like this. It is impossible. You know there are going to video, be videos that are going to perform like this, right? And it's like a nice big hit, and then it, that doesn't add anything to the channel. I could delete this video from my channel, and nothing would happen. No one's going back to seek it out. I could not do that with the, the video with Maul on it. Moreover, let me find one more juiced up thing. You're going to have something like, uh, ooh, let, give me one second. Like this, right? This is such an amazing, helpful video. It honestly is. And I'm not just tuning my own horn. I've seen the comments. There's a, a lot of people that have watched this video and it really helped them. I know that for a fact. 
making this video, I might have said it in this video, this video was going to get no views. Absolutely no views. Why? Insanely specific, touching on a topic many, many people have touched on before. I have touched on many times before. What did it offer? It was a specific strategy that I articulated very well that I knew was going to help a small minority of people, but absolutely help them. And what has it done? It did. And that's, these are the videos that are, I think, like the lifeblood of my channel. Horribly underperforming if you're going by finances, if you're going by watch time, if you're going by views, if you're going by subscribers. However, I'd like to think maybe those four subscribers are people like, wow, this guy saved my butt and saved me a bunch of money. Or wow, he really went above and beyond to help. Is that happening? Am I giving myself too much credit? Maybe. But this is kind of where I think you have to key in. Uh, again, really just talking to content creators and aspiring content creators. You need to be thinking not every video can do this. And certainly not every video will do this or this. But a lot of videos just have to do their job, fill out your library and really, really help some people. And it's worth it. It is still having some longevity, some performance. Uh, one view per minute. I mean, it will take uh, well, per hour actually, per minute would be pretty sweet. Um, but you can see, uh, I'm very happy with this video. I knew it wouldn't perform, but you know, I've gone to the comments and it really did make a difference. Uh, your guides have helped me a ton. Maul is a beast. Uh, Nerve Idril, all right, amazing video. Thought I needed more for 21, but apparently not. He got it done. So he might have thought he needed more, might have gone ka-ching, ka-ching on the credit card, and he did it. And that makes me really happy. So that's how I'm going to end it. I know this video in the end was kind of all over the place. Like I said, I was using the, the mob father himself. I was using Mr. Bucket as a vessel through which I could kind of engage in this virtual conversation, this kind of artificial thing, but respond to a lot of amazing things he brought up. And I did kind of hope I could conclude with this. Basically, the grind never stops in this space. That's part of the reason I want to get out of this space. Um, not that I don't love grinding, but it just it feels a lot of times unfulfilling because the videos that do feel to make a difference don't perform, but you just have to suck it up and know that you're doing the right thing, or I hope I'm doing the right thing. But moreover, the shadiness is is hard to get away from, and I'm in constant fear that it's going to poison me and poison my content, uh, which I, I, I know Ma, Ma Bucket felt re really bad about this ton, ton of stuff. Uh, you know, it is a gambling game. People do have addiction, and it's it's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable, and it's a truth we all have to face. Guys, if you're a content creator, just DM me directly, and I can help you out. Uh, otherwise, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you made it to the end, let me know in the comments. You're truly a hero. I think this is going to come in over one hour long. And one giant thank you to Mobucket. Um, you really set set the bar in this space. My, I, all of our content would be worse without you. I honestly think that. I really do. Because you inspired me, you inspired Ivy, you inspired a bunch of people, and I know for a fact we've inspired or at least provided an example for other people, which maybe they've succeeded. I don't, I don't know. I, power to them. I hope they have. But it all kind of did trickle down, down from you as far as I see it. Um, and uh, so much love. Thank you guys for watching. Share it with your mob father. Share it with your mother, and I'll see you real soon. Fast Didius.